Ah, now, it is good to be with you all and good to have you all here on this, the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, the Latin title at the top of the bulletin, it is working, I'm good. The Latin title at the top is Quasimodo Geneti. And that comes from Peter where he says, as newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk of the word. Uh, Quasimodo Geneti is Latin for as newborn infants. Um, there are a few announcements that I'd like to draw to your attention before the service begins this morning. Uh, the first is that coming up on Tuesday, I will be away at Winkle. Uh, twice a year, our circuit, the Westgate circuit, gets together with the Waterloo circuit, uh, and this month is one of those. So I will be over at St. John in Denver. Uh, if you're trying to find me on a Tuesday, uh, that's where I'll be. Uh, please just use my, my cell phone. Uh, coming up on Saturday is our Elder Mel Spring Rally. That'll be at our congregation in Sumner. I hope to see you there. Uh, then lastly, on the back, um, I did share with the congregation last week that our sister Lorraine Meyer did have a fall at home uh, a couple weeks ago now. She is in quarantine at New Aldea, uh, but we are looking to put together a, a card shower for her. So uh, if you are willing and able to send her uh, our get well card or we're, uh, we're praying for you card. Uh, this is her address there. Um, if you'd like, I can also give you her cell phone number. She has her cell phone and you can call her and visit with her, uh, but she will be on quarantine for a little bit longer. Uh, so we would appreciate it if you're at all able to, to send her a card. I'm sure she would appreciate that as well. Uh, one note about the service, you'll notice that uh, we do have a communion hymn up on the board. Uh, last week we sang two hymns during the distribution uh, and I've been trying to think about how we could work our communion hymns back into the service because since the last Pentecost, we haven't sung a whole lot of hymns about the Lord's Supper. Uh, and so what we're going to do today is after the Agnus Day, you know, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, I'm going to have the congregation be seated, and we're going to sing a couple stanzas of 619. Uh, and then after we've sung those couple stanzas, then we'll continue with the distribution uh, as we have for some time. On each Sunday, we're going to give this a shot uh, so that we can keep singing these communion hymns because they are excellent hymns uh, to keep in our repertoire. So after the Agnus Day, we'll sing a couple stanzas of 619. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 597, hymn 597.
This morning we follow divine service setting one. I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the readings. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, 
Can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, Go, God, to these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound. And behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
Even so, I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 470.
to God your hearts and voices raise. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. With these words, St. John helps us to understand what he means in our epistle reading this week. He wrote these words to faithful Christians scattered throughout what was then called Asia Minor, but what we now know as Turkey. They were in distress because in the decades since our Lord's resurrection and ascension, more and more false teachers were appearing, including many who had started out as Christians. Instead of living faithfully in the freedom of the gospel, they had succumbed to the devil's lies, returned to his kingdom, and sought to take all other Christians with them as well. Little children, you are from God. St. John encouraged his hearers and have overcome them. He continues in our text today, everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Just last week in the hymn of the day, we sang that it was a strange and dreadful strife when life and death contended, but the victory remained with life with our Lord. In our time, the Son of God took on our same human flesh. He endured the temptations and assaults of the devil and through his resurrection won the victory over the devil and his kingdom. This victory over sin over death and hell, he shares with us by his grace through faith. Everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, so says St. John. Now when scriptures speak about the world, they speak about it in two different ways. Uh, in, in Lutheranism, and this has come up a lot if you read the Lutheran Witness in recent issues, we sometimes use the language of the, the two kingdoms, the, the kingdom of the right and the kingdom of the left. And that's kind of how St. John is speaking today. Sometimes when the scriptures speak about the world, they speak it about it as God's kingdom. They mean God's kingdom of grace, of which we are now a part. In this kingdom, God rules by grace and the forgiveness of sins. Here we are restored to a right relationship with our Heavenly Father, with each other, and even with creation itself. At present, however, this is not something that we always see with our eyes. For example, we look around now and uh, we see empty pews. Although we are this morning worshiping with saints around the world and with the choirs of heaven, it's sometimes hard to picture. And that's because God's kingdom has not yet fully come. Instead, what we see now is the kingdom that we were born into by nature, which is the second way that the scriptures speak about the world as the fallen world, the kingdom of the devil. This is the world that St. John speaks of. In this fallen world, the devil and his minions play the part of Lord. They, they sin and lead into sin. The devil holds captive many worldly authorities, the majority of the world's population, and he even held us captive once. He still does when we refuse to listen to God's word and honor it with our lives, instead giving in to temptation and, and its fruit. In this kingdom, there is nothing but sin, death, and, and the hell that awaits to receive us in the end. But this is the world that Christ overcame, and which through faith we have overcome too. We'll hear these words again in three weeks or so, but this is what our Lord said himself. 
I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus said those words to his disciples only hours before his betrayal. And he said them because he knew exactly what would happen. He knew that it was for us that he had taken on flesh, that it was for us that he emptied himself of his glory for a time so that he might suffer for us the temptations and assaults of the devil. It says in Hebrews, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us in our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. It also says, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. This is what Jesus announced to the disciples and to Thomas when he showed them his hands and his side. He was the same Jesus that they knew and followed. He, he did die, but now he lives again. By his death, Jesus atoned for all human sin, and by his resurrection, he broke death's iron bars. He shattered the devil's kingdom. He, he took away the strong man's armor and was now dividing the spoil. St. John encouraged his hearers to not be afraid of, of false teachers, of, of death, or, or the devil himself. For Christ has won the victory, and through faith, we share in that victory. This is he who came by water and blood, John says, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. Here St. John speaks both about Jesus' ministry and how he now comes to us. Jesus' public ministry began, you remember, with his baptism by John in the Jordan River. It was there that the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, and God the Father himself spoke, confirming that Jesus is his beloved Son, his chosen one. The same Jesus Christ is the one who shed his blood for us on the cross. And as Thomas testified, who is now risen from the dead, through the water and the blood, he who is both God and man conquered the devil and his kingdom for us. And that victory he shares with us now through water and blood. In the water of holy baptism, Jesus pours out on us the Holy Spirit. The Spirit works through the Word in that water to create faith and join us to Christ's resurrection. In baptism, Christ makes His resurrection our resurrection and bestows on us His victory over death in the grave. Through baptism, we become members of Christ's kingdom. And although the war is won, some fighting does remain since we are in the flesh. To strengthen us in this fight, Christ comes to us by his blood in the sacrament of the altar. Through his body and blood, Christ gives to us the forgiveness which he won for us on the cross and strengthens us for the fight until his victory is made complete on the last day. St. John therefore encourages us today, one week after Easter, little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Through Christ's resurrection, the devil and his kingdom are defeated. Death is defeated. By faith, Christ makes his victory our own. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Apostles' Creed is written for us on page 159. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we remember especially a sister in Christ named Pam Clark. Uh, Pam was formerly a member here. Uh, her husband, John Reese has recently died. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Father, you raised up your son from the dead that he might bestow his Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sins on us. Grant that we may live joyfully as those who in holy baptism have been crucified and raised up with Christ, that we also may testify boldly of him, his forgiveness and his peace to all who are here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your Son appeared to his disciples in his resurrected flesh and sent them out to proclaim repentance for the forgiveness of sins in his name. Continue to raise up faithful men to serve us in the office of the Holy Ministry and bless their work among your people, who with St. Thomas confess Jesus as Lord and God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, remember those who have wandered from the household of faith. Faithful to your promises, work all things in their lives to remind them of their need for your unending grace and steadfast love that they might return to the faith and delight in your Son, crucified and raised for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you appoint rulers and officials for the sake of order and peace. Bless those you have placed in authority over us in federal, state, and local levels. Give to them the desire to serve with integrity and honor and to work for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we praise your Son's resurrection from the dead and draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Especially this day do we pray for our sister Pam upon the death of her husband and for our sister Lorraine as she recovers from her fall and also those whom we name in our hearts. Graciously receive our prayers of intercession and hear them for his sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your Son made the disciples glad in his risen and life-giving flesh on the first day of the week and again eight days later, so let us find gladness in his wounds and his abiding presence among us each week in the Blessed Sacrament. Give us a hunger for your word of peace in this supper, through which his risen and life-giving body and blood are given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace and for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the Holy Sacraments, that through them we may have comfort and the forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may heartily believe your word, and through the holy sacraments establish our faith day by day, until at last we obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue by singing the offertory.
hearts of all his people. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of His body and His blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat His body and drink His blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our closing hymn, hymn 487. Thank you. 